board. Um, I just have a comment uh, for folks who are here. We do, number one, apologize uh, for the delay in the start of our regular meeting. Um, we have some other business that um, has uh, warranted our attention. Um, my comment uh, really is that there, uh, we recognize there's been great interest in a matter involving the educational program of a high school student. Um, and presumably that's the matter why I have all these uh, microphones and other things in front of us um, and has drawn unprecedented interest in what otherwise is uh, fairly sedate meetings, as uh, those who are regula regulars know, of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. I want to take a moment just to address all of you and advise you of the process that the board is engaged in. Um, it's one that we've followed in the past, one that we're following right now, and one that we will follow in the future when it involves specific student issues. Um, student issues are confidential and are discussed only in executive sessions. We have just been in, a, in an executive session and within a minute or two we will be going back in. The executive sessions are closed to the public. Um, we have a matter before us, um, before the board, that involves the delivery of education to a specific student. An appeal made um, uh, an appeal has been made for review of the course of action that's been determined by the superintendent, and the appeal um, has just been heard by the f uh, full school board. Um, so before the board then, in executive session, uh, we did examine evidence in order to determine merits of both sides of the discussion. It's then the board's responsibility to make a determination regarding two fairly narrow questions. Um, is this a matter appropriately placed within the board's decision-making jurisdiction? And if so, and second, is the course of a action taken by the superintendent reasonable and appropriate? Um, we've used legal counsel to advise us on matters of law. Um, and we will be looking now for a motion to go back into executive session uh, for deliberation because we've completed um, uh, the executive session to discuss a student matter. Um, action that will be taken by the board, if any, will be taken in public session. That's why we're back here in sort of a public session now um, before we go back into executive session. Um, and the way that would happen is uh, with a crafting of a motion and a vote taken by the board. Um, any action taken by the board will be done on the basis of the merits of the presentations that we've just heard in executive session. So I hope uh, you can all imagine that student matters do become very complicated and involve very complex and highly confidential information and considerations. The strength of public opinion on anything other than global philosophical issues is really not relevant to specific student matters. And the board does acknowledge um, and has considered the public opinion as it's been expressed to us related to the larger, more general issues that are presumed to be involved in this particular case. Um, right now, I am looking for a motion to go into executive session. Kevin. I move that we enter executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA section 405-6E to consult with legal counsel to discuss the rights and duties of the school board with respect to a student matter. Okay. Is there a second? It was corrected to F instead of E, 6 F. Make the correction. Uh, to correct that to 6 F. Okay, with that correction made, a second? Second. Jim, questions or comments by board members? Who's? I didn't get, no, I'll have to get it from him. But to enter executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA section 4056. E, to consult with legal counsel to discuss the rights and duties of the school board with respect to a student matter. I recommend that there be second parts of that motion and uh, to enter executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA section 4056F to consider information contained in student records that is confidential under the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. Two reasons for the executive session. I further move that we enter executive sec uh, session under 1 MRSA section 4056F um, in order to make reference to confidential, personally identifiable information contained in educational records that will necessarily pervade the discussion 
and that it is neither practical nor reasonable to conduct deliberation on this matter in public without making reference to such confidential, personally identifiable information. Okay. With the uh, motion and the revisions, Jim, second. second. Questions or comments about this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. We'll now ex um, enter executive session and we will be back in uh, public session as soon as deliberations are completed. Um, I think that we will probably, I'm going to take liberty with the uh, regular agenda in terms of comments by high school and middle school representatives, um, also in terms of uh, principals' reports, so, um, and the others are important pieces that we have for business this evening. So um, that may. Um, we have just exited uh, executive session, and I believe that there is a motion to be presented. Keith. I move to approve the temporary alternative educational placement of a student made by the superintendent, to adopt the findings and conclusions proposed by the superintendent, and to direct the superintendent to notify the guardian of this action and the board's findings and conclusions. That motion made, is there a second? Second. Jim. Um, Questions or comments from the board members? Seeing none, all those in favor? Motion? 7-0. Just a quick statement. Um, we, as a board, uh, this evening uh, have had to weigh very carefully uh, the rights of individuals to be educated and the paramount concern for having a safe, non-disruptive school environment. The board has struggled, has struggled to reach unanimously a result that balances these concerns. And we do recognize that community members have varying and sometimes opposing opinions about matters like this and this particular matter. We believe that we have performed our duty uh, to make a decision that is in the best interest of the school community, the community at large, and all of the parties involved. Thank you. We're going to now move on to our regular agenda. And that is um, adjustments to our agenda. Adjustments. This is the the, in the negotiations, when is the work? Right. So there are no adjustments to the agenda. We'll move on to approval of the January school board meeting minutes. Um, any uh, revisions to those minutes? Seeing none, I'm moving on. Can you keep that? Comments um, by high school and middle school representatives. Mary, we are skipping over. Um, oh, he's they still here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've waited all this, you have waited all this time and we will hear you. We will have comments from our high school reps. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I we, we, we gave you permission to, to go. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, for sports, boys basketball, I've heard just one, a game against Falmouth. Very tough game. So their record is now 13-4. And their last home season game will be Friday, and it's going to be special recognition for seniors. Elizabeth, pull that down. Sorry if I did that. Okay, girls basketball has a 7-9 record. Swimming, they are hosting the Southwestern meet. They hosted the girls last week and the boys this week in our lovely new pool, which is now open. If any of you haven't been there, it's a great place. Um, track, we've had a very good season, large team, as I've been saying. And our Western Maine conference meet is this Friday. And the girls, I think, are fourth or fifth of 10-ish teams. I don't know how the guys are doing, but we do. It's the best season since I've been in high school. Um, we had midterms a couple weeks ago, and we've begun the second semester. We received report cards last Friday. Um, juniors have begun their American History Research Papers, the second big junior research paper. Um, just a note about the new Spanish teacher, I guess, that you guys hired to replace Ms. Tucker. He's very enthusiastic. He's great. I really like him. So. You did a good job, good job on that one. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, 
uh, let's see, jazz band. We had a competition at Biddeford on Saturday. Um, we had a score of 83 out of 100, I think. I don't know how we did compared to other people, but we got some very helpful comments from the USM jazz band director who evaluated our performance. Um, we received the results from the Allstate Music Festival. Five stu or 15 students total, six in the band, five in the orchestra, and for the first time since I've been in high school, we have four singers. <coughs> I've been saying all year about how Ms. DeGroff has greatly improved the chorus program, and this is just another proof of it. Um, let's see. Debate state meet is this Saturday. Speech state meet is last Saturday. We had one student placed second in her category. Um, theater, the one act play, we are not hosting a festival this year, but it is March 10th and 11th, and we're doing the play The Dining Room, which is the same as we did several years ago. Um, and John, you want to talk about the SAC? Um, uh, the SAC is, uh, <clears throat> has made a proposal for uh, senior privilege, and we'll be presenting that um, next month to you. Or, I don't, next month. So you'll be <clears throat> hearing more about that later on. I just thought I'd introduce it to you now, just the names. The senior, senior privilege, um, about it. Um, and we also, the SAC has made a, um, <coughs> a survey on the block schedules. It's a new uh, scheduling, it's an eight day rotation with an 85 minute period, um, <coughs> mixed into every day. And we're sending a survey to get the teachers and the students uh, impression on, this, on the uh, block schedule itself. Um, we had a facilitator meeting um, last week with the uh, eighth graders. We do that monthly just to hear their views and discuss issues with them. Um, one thing we're doing, um, Mr. Dawson has orchestrated, we're, we're going to have <coughs> facilitators in the high school. We're doing, uh, we're trying to get more facilitator trainer, trainers to uh, have group discussions with the entire school. So Mr. Dawson's working on that right now. And that's, we got our MEA results back and uh, we did really well. So that's about it. Um, any questions? Questions for John or Elizabeth? Thank you for um, staying here and for delivering uh, your report. We appreciate that. Comment. John, um, if you can, I suggest you get copies of your polished, finished product out to um, <clears throat> over to the superintendent's office for distribution so everybody can read it in advance. Okay. I appreciate your I look forward to meeting with you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And presumably our middle school reps are home in bed? I hope so. <laughs> okay, I hope so too. That's where some of the rest of us would like to be. Um, moving to communications, um, and uh, Tom, you have notifications of retirements? Yeah, I'd like to make a um, special note that we do have um, uh, Marianne Casey, um, notice of retirement and uh, has been in this community as an educator for 27 years. Um, also under communication, <coughs> uh, there's a notification of the teacher's intent to return uh, from the leave, um, and also just for your benefit, <coughs> notification of uh, school board terms. Okay, thank you. And um, hopefully we'll have an opportunity to um, congratulate Marianne on her retirement. John? There was another retirement, Susan Robinson. Is that me? Oh, oh yes, middle school. Yes. Middle school. Secretary. How many? 25. 25 years? 25. 25 years? George, I just say sure. A couple yes, of sure, Nancy. And I, I just want you to know, we do understand about not having the principal's reports tonight, but certainly part of what I would have said tonight, and I really would hate to have the time pass without mentioning it, that both for Mary Ann Casey, who is departing after 25, 27 years with us, and um, Susan Robinson after 25 plus, um, I think speaking for the middle school, I just need to mention um, how valuable these people have been to us, what an integral part of our team. Um, it will seem really strange next year in fifth grade not to have Mary Ann there, but Mary Ann's presence is felt beyond her classroom, beyond just her team, and also to the team of the middle school. She has also, during her career, served on many system-wide committees and really been that professional that goes and does a wonderful job in the classroom every day in a variety of subject areas. And she has taught everything, I think. I'm not sure she's taught world language for us, but I think she's covered just about everything else. 
um, to also working beyond to the other parts of our profession as well, too. Um, and we certainly wish her well. Susan has been um, a mainstay in the middle school. She worked with many of our people first as an ed, what has come to be known now as an ed tech one, teacher assistant and helping out in clerical work. And then um, 11 years ago, moved to um, being a secretary in the office because when I was the <coughs> assistant principal at Pine Cove, she came and moved to a secretary and she was a secretary in my office for that first year and then gradually moved to back to the middle school office um, as the intermediate section sort of closed down of our building. Um, and she has absolutely done a wonderful job for us, greeting people in the morning, uh, sustaining people through many different kinds of phone calls and answering all sorts of questions. So we certainly in the middle school wish both of them well in their next step of the adventure of their long and happy lives. So thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And um, we certainly will hope to be able to uh, get to wish them a, a, a good retirement in person. Um, I've worked with uh, Marianne both as a teacher and in some of her other roles. And, uh, and it's been uh, a very nice and, and very pleasant and productive experience working with her. And we certainly do appreciate the time that both of those individuals uh, committed to our school system. Um, superintendent's report, Tom. I'll try to be as brief on this. We, uh, I, I did share information in your, in your packet regarding our retreat, um, <coughs> future direction planning committee. Um, we look through that right now. Um, our consultant is is looking at the data from the retreat, and there will be more feedback to come in the future and uh, as to what our next steps would be. But I uh, don't want to take the time to go through all of that now. Also, just an update on the fingerprinting uh, LD2490 that uh, is now in, I thought it was through committee, it's in the education committee, and actually this week is being discussed uh, in the education committee. Uh, so there is no no, no action is taken on that yet. 1998-99 um, MEA results. Uh, I would like to just have a comment from, from administrators briefly because I think it is important. Um, what you're seeing in front of you is the first go-round of the new uh, MEAs. Um, what you need to know that the span is only an 80-point span, whereas before the scores uh, would there be a, a large difference where you can score up to 400. Um, so top to bottom, there is only an 80-point span. I think we did very well, but this is the first go-round. It's very difficult to put too much into it, but it is related to the learning results. Um, as we compare to surrounding districts, we compare favorably. I just would ask any of you to have a comment uh, to make about your, your perceptions and maybe what you plan on doing with the results. Just briefly, I want you to know. You'll need, you'll need to go to the podium, Tom. The, uh, we've been waiting for the school level report for months. We'd already looked at the raw data. So the faculty looked at the uh, school reports last week, and uh, surprisingly, they were rather interested in it. I was impressed that they took it to be an indication for the whole school. So we, we looked at the data. We realized since it's the first year that Pond Cove although we were above average, we don't, we're not meeting the standards in many areas. And one of the areas we want to focus on is writing, uh, specifically revision. And in the other areas, it seems to be a matter of making sure we're teaching to the content and learning results. I was going to bring my glasses, but otherwise I wasn't really going to be able to I going to read this to you anyway. Um, Pretty much exactly what um, has already been reported, that it's a, the first year out, so it's a little bit different and interesting. What we're trying to look at, at, it on, at it right now is to inform our instruction. And we have started working in that assessment area and what part of the MEAs will the MEAs tell us. We met the standards in some of the areas. Um, we came close in others. And we don't really have a long enough pattern to really say, does that mean anything? Next year, those numbers, two or three a little bit different way, could swing it one way or the other. So what we're looking at is, and what we really want to analyze, are some of the kinds of questions that students missed and the opportunities for that kind of longer assessment. So what this is is just a collection, and there's a whole thing here, of the assessments that we do right now in class. 
And really, what we're going to do, and the MEAs will be part of this, is we have our people, as I reported last time, who've worked on MAP and ELMS are going to be doing at our next staff meeting. They're going to share how to design um, more challenging assessments or assessments that take on a little bit different twist and have a bit more performance involved in them um, and some more analysis involved in them for um, students to have to interact with. The ELMS people will share their framework for designing those tasks, and much of that is taking tasks you already use and putting them through a thing. The MAP people will share um, how to respond to those. Both of those have a strong component with them where you align it with the learning results, which is exactly what the MEAs do. And um, then we hope to, um, at each grade level, design a task that we do this spring, um, do it and get some feedback. Um, Hopefully those tasks will be similar to the kinds of things that they do on the MEAs. They won't be exactly like that. And that will just add to our plate to looking at, so what have the MEAs told us? Um, individually by themselves, they don't tell us anything. It's the beginning of finding some more information out. Thank you, Nancy. <clears throat> I think there's uh, too much new to add, but uh, the one thing I, I would say about uh, these tests that I don't think has been uh, repeated by the others um, is that the, the benefit of it, I think, for a district like ours is that it definitely gives you room to grow and to improve. Uh, in the past, um, we often had situations where our scores were at the very, in the very top band, the, the 390 to 400. And you look at those and say, gosh, what do we, you know, all we have to worry about is whether we fall off uh, the, the perch and start descending. This, uh, with the results uh, and the, the new standards, uh, what we can do is, uh, and what we are doing already is taking the, the, the goals of the, the board, which are to reach all students. Yes, it's heartening to know that in this first run, relative to other schools, uh, our students performed uh, fairly well. But at the same time, it's very easy to look and, and, and pick your area and say, oh, wait a minute, in this area, 30% or in this area, 40% or even in some areas, 55, 60% didn't fully meet the standards. This is an area that we need to, you know, we need to continue uh, striving for. Uh, so I think that, that will be a, a big focus is where uh, the students that aren't meeting standards or that are partially meeting standards, uh, how can we take them to the next level? Uh, I, I think it's too early for us to say that we've looked at them and analyzed the material and said, ah, okay, this is a specific area that we need to uh, concentrate on. But it's, uh, it, it does leave you much more room because it's a more discriminating test. It leaves you much more room to grow. Thanks, Pete. Um, <clears throat> we did get, uh, this is Gail's um, update on her sabbatical, is that what? Yes, what you have in your packet, and this, I, I know there will be uh, an update or an overview when she returns, but on her own, Gail thought it would be a nice idea to inform you as to things that have been happening, mm -hmm. so I included that in your packet. And I would say too, Gail and I were under the, somehow we either misread this or how, we thought, she needed to update you halfway. So. It was, um, I, I think that we may have asked that to give us an update as to, or give us a progress report. I think it was because her proposal was so interesting and we were all just kind of, I know I was interested in hearing back how she was doing. And um, the, only, the only comment I have about her report back is it just sounds like she's having too much fun. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, that's good. John, before yeah, you move John. on, could I go back to communications? Uh, Normally you ask if any of us have any. Maybe yes, and I have you I, I, off, I sort of moved through it quickly. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank a teacher who's retired by the name of Maggie Beals, who was a social studies teacher in the high school for quite a few years and very well respected and superb teacher. And at our last, after our last workshop, uh, we had a school board meeting and we nominated and passed Arthur Davis to be her replacement. I think we've got a, an excellent uh, selection there. I'd like to welcome him aboard to the faculty and appreciate all the efforts that went through with the research team on that. Thank you, John. Sorry we moved through so quickly. Um, principal's reports. Not tonight. <laughs> uh, 
S send us <laughs> send us an email. I read I read my emails all the time. Um, committee reports. Um, finance subcommittee. Um, Keith is off the hook because we didn't have one. Policy subcommittee. Kevin. Policy subcommittee is going to read some uh, policies later. Uh, there is. Uh, we will be talking at the next meeting about finalizing public participation policy, uh, uh, complaint policy. Um, and we may take a peek at the high school students' policy. And that would be Thursday morning at 8.30, right here in the Jordan Conference Room. Um, somebody bring bagels and coffee. OK. Um, and we'll review those dates at the end. Um, facilities um, <coughs> meeting. Are we? Um, we had our first meeting last month. And basically, we're at the stage of gathering information. and. Um, what we did was, first of all, we heard from all the administrators um, as to their needs by individual school. And um, the committee members then took a tour um, last week through the middle school and the high school. This week, we will go through um, Pond Cove. We had, and, and the things that are part of that are all part of, you know, looking at storage space in school, looking at classrooms, looking at um, the cafetorium, those different things that we could physically see walking through, the, um, through each school. We also had a discussion about full day kindergarten. And in that venue, we're, we're now gathering information from different sources. Um, Tom Eismeyer and Tom Frisella are both talking to um, other schools in the area and we'll have that information for this next meeting and there are people um, looking for information on the internet and we're getting um, information from local schools who have kindergarten programs as well um, we are looking at enrollment numbers um, that are projected out for the next few years and at the end, it will, this, the meeting that's coming up this Friday, um, we will be setting a timeline for the balance of the year. And within that, we will be looking to um, have a, a forum for full day kindergarten so that anyone who wants to participate can come in and, and talk about it. And by the end of the school year, we hope to hire an is it an engineering firm? Mm -hmm. Is that what we call it? To do a study to see physically, you know, what space we will need and when after we determine right. what it is. Do all the uh, data collection, the right. fact right. collecting the facts. Um, and I think that's it. That's where we are. Our next meeting is this Friday. And as I said um, before the meeting, we're taking a tour through Pine Cove. Okay. And you have, um, and your parent representatives are on there? You ha you've got your representative? We have all of our, actually, we just added one parent representative, which is um, Ann Swift Kayata, who we needed some representation from the high school. And it will be a nice tie in also with town council. Sure, town, good. OK, um, unfinished business is next on the agenda. Any business that we've left unfinished? Um, if not, then we'll move on to new business and um, consideration of policies for first reading. Kevin, do you want to uh, walk us through these? Or? Yeah, I'm going to blast right through. Um, these three policies have come forward with a recommendation from a unanimous recommendation of the policy subcommittee that they be adopted. This is the first reading. Um, fundraising, uh, file DF. It is the intent of the Cape Elizabeth School Board to provide for the basic educational, co-curricular, and athletic needs of the students and programs through the normal budgetary process. However, the board recognizes that certain types of fundraising activities will enhance the relationship between school and community and will contribute to the overall improvement of the school program. In order that fundraising not interfere with the academic program and place undue demands on the Cape Elizabeth community, it is the desire of the school board that fundraising activities be selective, coordinated, and purposeful. Also, the Cape Elizabeth School Board strongly encourages 
representatives from all booster organizations to meet at least once a year to discuss equity and recognition issues related to fundraising efforts. All schools, school-based organizations, and parent community groups raising monies to benefit the Cape Elizabeth School Department must comply with the established fundraising administrative procedures. That is next on the reading. This is really too long to read. It basically outlines um, some guidelines for people who are raising uh, funds for booster groups or parent groups, et cetera, for school purposes in where they should be uh, notifying principals or advisors. And in the case of items over $20,000, that's an absolute requirement. Also, um, to take into uh, consideration the fact that you can't build anything unless you have uh, a whole series of approvals. So don't start running, uh, raising money before you've got the approvals. Um, I had asked, and I don't know if this has happened because of everything else that's going on, is that copies of these policies go to the principals and to the athletic director for distribution to the various affected groups so they could comment on that. If that hasn't happened, um, I will keep a period of time open for comment beyond Thursday. The last policy. Um, File. Oh, good. I was going to do that. Um, free admissions. Senior citizens of Cape Elizabeth, persons 62 years of age or older, may be given a senior citizen guest pass, which will permit them, which shall permit them to attend all activities of the schools, including athletic events, free of charge. This policy represents a small token of appreciation from the school board for all the Cape Elizabeth senior citizens have done for the schools over the years. That's it. Um, in the first reading, we uh, need to give an opportunity to the other board members to respond. Um, I know that uh, with that revision, that was the only comment that I had. Um, John, do you have a comment or question? Uh, under the free admissions, it says may be given. Uh, why the choice of may as opposed to will be given? Good point, huh? Um, is it something that everyone will get issued to them, or is it something that if they call and ask for, they can get one? They have to come call and ask for we, We've probably got to develop some guidelines on the administration. Um, I suspect that's why it says may. It, I don't think it would be an application thing. It would be. It's not an application. We're, but we're not mailing them out. We're not, they will be given. Right. We would advertise in a local paper that they're, that's available, the discussion we had. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not a question if you're 62 years of age and live in the town and get a guest for The intent of this policy is to give everyone 62 years of age or older free admission to all school events. If anybody has a suggestion and wording to change it so that it reflects more accurately my, our intention, I'd be willing to have a change for the second reading. It could just say, maybe, John, something like, may, upon request, be given a, right. something like well, that. We'll and then you figure out how to request it. The way I read it, it could be denied. Right. May be given, yeah. not will be given. Maybe that would do it. Other, um, other comments on the other policies that have been presented? Will be given upon request. Something along those lines. Um, I think they look good. I, um, I like them. Um, that's it. So they'll come up for second reading next month. Next month. Moving on to um, cover all those consideration of a request for construction of dugouts at Holman and Capano Fields. What's where's the Capano Fields? Yeah, where is the South 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 South. Oh. What is it? It's the Softball. And it's Capano? Named after Ed Capano. Ed Capano. Who was a softball player? A long, long oh. time teacher. I just, I've never heard it where, referred to that. Where would they go in the softball field? Because they play soccer there, don't they? In the softball field? Um. <laughs> I know, didn't it say in the, um, in the memo that 
This is just a memo that I had received from uh, Michael McGovern. I don't know um, if um, Heath is aware that this is in the works and how that, and if they do play soccer in that field, how that, I, I don't know. Uh, Keith is aware that it's in the works. I, I know he's been approached about it and uh, thinks it's a good idea. I think uh, the situation of the dugouts, if I got the orientation of the field right, first and third baselines would be at the corners of the field. You would still presumably be able to play soccer out onto the on the on softball the, field or the baseball say, field? Keith, this is on the Capano softball? softball field. I saw something about Keith being involved. Mm. Maybe not this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's Those, just hard to play soccer if you've got a dugout. The, <laughs> soccer games that are played on that field, I think, are for the younger ages because it's, right. it's not a full size soccer field. So I think uh, for U10 and U11, maybe even, so it uh, works. you can push the field out away from the dugouts, so it wouldn't be a safety problem. I think. That's my understanding, anyway. It also has to still go through the planning board, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So are we just being asked for yes, for your for, uh, okay, okay we'll on that? Yeah. John? Well, the way the item says consideration of request for construction, isn't it more of a, a request to go forward to do the planning and then come back to ask for our final approval after they've laid it all out and got the approvals? So that's, isn't that still within our control? So, right. What you're giving them right now is you're okay for them to continue to go to the planning board and go through those necessary steps. Right, but not for the construction of The way this is worded, it, you're right. Right. It talks about proceed with the plan. So do we need a motion? Um, Kevin. I move that we authorize or request the town council to continue with the planning board process and planning for um, dugouts at Holman at uh, Holman and Capano Fields. Okay. Seconded by Jim. Um, other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Jen? 7 0. Um, moving on to consideration of a teacher's request for an additional year of unpaid leave of absence. This is um, from Ann Holt. And um, is, do, do we have a recommendation from the superintendent? I don't know what the history um, is of uh, extending leaves like this. I, I do know that uh, in light of other issues, um, I would recommend that he grant it would help with staffing issues also. I'm sorry, um, just how much again? We have, we're having some, uh, my recommendation with the grant that that's something you're accustomed to doing. Um, it it's not going to cost anything, but it also would help us with some staffing issues at the uh, elementary school. It would help us. I'm not sure. I have to go to um, Keith to look at and say, I'm not sure what, if we've seen one of these before, which is just an extension of the leave already and a maternity leave. Um, but Tom, would you like to speak to it for us? historical perspective while Tom's getting the microphone, quite probably seven or eight years ago, Kelly Manning, how long ago was that? She was granted a second year of maternity, there is an extension. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it's new to me. I, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't grant it, but okay. uh, it's something that would help out both Anne and uh, we, we have very good teachers in place at the moment. So, I mean. Yes, we love Ann back, but this seems to be something that, that, that she, would benefit her. She's asking and yeah. wants to do. Okay. Um, thank you, Tom. I just, I guess there's, it's just not one that I didn't um, know what the I'm familiar with. It doesn't seem in terms of it's precedent. That one case there is one. It seems. Um, so th then we're, I guess we have a recommendation from the superintendent and the principal of the school to approve the extension. Is there a motion? Jennifer? I move we approve the extension of uh, Ann Holt's maternity leave for another year. Um, okay, and second, Marie, any questions or comments about this? Um, seeing none, all those in favor? And that's 7-0. Maybe, maybe Ann's up with the baby now and watching us. And, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, 
Consideration uh, of the superintendent's nomination to athletic fee positions. And I'd like to rec these are the uh, spring coaches and recommend those returning coaches and the one new coach, Aaron Filio. Okay, um, and we need a, uh, a motion. Keith. Keith? I move we accept the super superintendent's recommendation for the athletic fee position. Thank you. Seconded? Hi, right, Jennifer. Any uh, questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. Um, moving on now, consideration of sabbatical leave proposals for 2000 2001 school year. And I know that we um, had a recommendation. Uh, did you want to present that, sure. um, Marie? Um, Tom and I had five requests for sabbatical leave. Um, for the next school year, 2000, 2001. And um, we sat through all of the individual presentations and interviewed each candidate. Each um, sabbatical leave request um, was very unique. And, and I have to say that it was a, a tough decision and, and there was a lot of conversation. However, there were two of them that stood out amongst all of the rest. And those, one of the, the primary criteria for granting a sabbatical leave is for the teacher to describe um, how her project, her his project, um, uh, how it will impact the classroom. And the two that we have chosen, we feel that they not only impact the classroom, um, but they will uh, take us a long way in terms of bringing back their knowledge and what they get from their sabbatical to other faculty and staff in our schools, not only in the schools that they teach, but in the other schools as well. So um, we are recommending Jill Bell and Sue Richman for full year sabbaticals. Um, Jill, uh, which has been with the school district for 10 years and um, currently is a fifth grade teacher, her sabbatical is uh, to obtain training in technology education through university study and field observation and then to develop project-based research opportunities for students in Cape Elizabeth using interactive technologies. And that's the key word, interactive technologies. That's what her project is all about. Mm -hmm. um, and the things, if you read the write-up, um, uh, everything that she's doing is taking um, us further in the step of advancing technology with what we currently have. Um, Sue Richman has been with our district for eight years and um, she's currently a biology teacher in our high school. She plans to spend her time in the laboratory and the field. She will be involved in the college classroom doing scientific research with other scientists and on foot in the ecosystems of New Zealand and Australia. And her sabbatical um, sounds fabulous. I mean, she is involved in so many different opportunities. And really, she wants to participate and, and come back with new research options, you know, that, that she can then pass on to other people. In light of what we are all talking about in terms of um, uh, teacher training workshops and our own staff development, both of these sabbaticals tie into how we want to be able to take our own people and teach and train our own people um, from what they learn. And I think both of these have a lot of good um, qualities about them, should we choose to approve them. OK. Um, were there any comments from the, from the uh, administrators at the buildings? or? Is that uh, part of is it, that yeah. part of the process? It's part of the yes. process. In each each one of these, um, their off three schools are represented, and um, the administrators are supportive, and they, they all were excellent requests, um, and they can comment, but I, they were supportive of all the requests. Okay. Um, 
and I just don't, don't want to say again what uh, Maria said, but I think the real tie in staff development to the goals of the districts were very obvious in these requests, and they did stand out amongst the rest, and the others had a lot of merit uh, to them also. Okay. Um, we would ask the others to resubmit, you know, in a future year or whatever. Okay. Um, this is something that does, it has uh, budget implications, and I think that's indicated in the recommendation sheet that um, Marie and Tom put together. Um, this is something that does require board action, so I do need a, a motion. Jim. I would remove, uh, move that we approve the two <coughs> sabbatical leave proposals as <coughs> by the sabbatical leave committee. Okay. Second? Second. Um, any other questions or further discussion? I, I just have one question. Um, what's a typical number of sabbaticals in a year with a school our size? Do you have any experience in that? It, it varies from, from district to district. Um, unfortunate, I, I think we're very fortunate here that, that I, what we get out of this I think will be very beneficial. Some districts tend because there is some cost involved. Um, don't do it as much. I know in my previous district we, there was maybe one uh, a year, um, but that's only because that's all we had in request. Mm -hmm. I think it's unusual but positive that five people wanted to get involved with this kind of an opportunity because they do take half salary, so there is a cost to them also. But I think it's a positive statement that they, we had that many requests. And it's half salary and full benefits? Right. John? Okay. I'd like yes, to John. commend uh, Marie and her committee, plus all the administrators. She did an excellent job in her presentation, and I know it took a lot of time putting this together, and I appreciate the efforts that she's put into it. My one comment would be, are there any bears in New Zealand or Australia? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. Boy, I not. Um, okay, um, we had a motion and a second, uh, the discussion. Um, any further discussion or questions? I just think um, uh, same thing as John's comment. It was just really nice to be able to read this, get a real good feel, and uh, both Jill and Sue uh, look like they have uh, great learning experiences. Um, lined up, so that's terrific. Um, all those in favor? And that's 7-0. And then um, our last piece of, of new business is consideration of the superintendent's nominations to administrative positions for 2000-2001. Um, as you may or may not know, it's required that by March 1st of each year, um, action is taken regarding nomination of administrative positions. Um, just a statement about that. In the, in the time that I've been here, I think uh, we have a very strong administrative team. Um, we are uh, examining some ways that we can deal as a group with you know, how do we better evaluate each other, including myself, um, and how do we get feedback from each other in, in looking at, we are developing a process to do that and develop goals for next year. Uh, but I feel very comfortable in nominating to you uh, the administrative positions for uh, renewal for the 2000-2001 school year. Okay. Um, with that said, I need a motion on the superintendent's recommendation. Jennifer? I move we, um, nom we accept the superintendent's nomination to administrative positions for the year 2000-2001. Okay. And second, Jim? Second. Any comments or questions, First, John? Uh, of the superintendent, the evaluation of administrators on our policy it says a report shall be made to the board annually on the performance of all administrators. Do you have a time frame when we'll be hearing from you in reference to this? Probably in what we are, we're going to get involved with some goals. We're <coughs> working with a consultant on, uh, as I explained before, a 360 evaluation process the team will be going through. Um, so in the spring of the year, we'll have that process completed. So there will be a report in the spring. Spring of this year, 2000. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments? Not only is this something that's required, but it's a pleasure to do. Um, all those in favor? Seven, seven, zero. Arms are, arms are moving slowly here. Congratulations. Um,
Let me, before we uh, make a motion to adjourn this, review the dates to remember. The school board policy subcommittee meeting, as Kevin said, is Thursday, February 10th, which is this Thursday, year 2000, at 8.30 in the morning in the William Jordan Conference Room. The school board workshop meeting is in the high school library on February 29th at 7 p.m., and that continues our budget work. It's the budget overview. The school board workshop meeting, Saturday, um, March 4th, 2000, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the council, council chambers, and that's our all-day budget session. Uh, the Finance Subcommittee meeting will precede the regular school board meeting. That will be at 6.30 on March 14th, the regular school board meeting at 7.30 March 14th. Uh, with all that said, um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved by John, seconded by Marie. All those in favor? Aye. 7-0. Thank you. Thanks for sticking with us tonight.